This is Globe Watch, and this is Charles Ebune. Top politicians in the world today are increasingly using social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to break the news. That exclusivity was reserved for broadcast journalism, radio and television years ago. But that unfortunately is not the case today with the rise of populism in the Western media where the traditional broadcasters are accused of being part of the establishment. So where is the future of on-air journalism in the era of online news? My guest today on Globe Watch is the Director General of TV Sync Monde, broadcasting in at least 200 countries in the world. And Pride itself as the world's third largest media empire. If Bigo, welcome to Globe Watch. Thank you so much, Chance, for having me. The Reuters Institute at Oxford University, in their latest report, states, quote, in the UK, the average number of minutes of television viewing for the population as a whole declined from a high of 241 minutes per day in 2012 to 216 minutes per day in 2015, a 10% decline in three years. The television industry in which you and I are found is in deep trouble. Well, it is and it is not, uh, Charles. Uh, because actually those figures uh, show that uh, the general viewing is uh, declining. But most of what is watched on different, uh, you know, uh, other um, devices than the usual uh, old-fashioned uh, TV uh, is very often made of content that has been provided actually by TV channels. I mean, you just go on YouTube, uh, for example, and most of what you see on YouTube has been uh, produced by the TV channels. Now, the, actually, the real big question uh, to us is how do you monetize uh, your content? Because you have to obviously pay for 100% of it but there's only a small part uh, that uh, you can uh, monetize. So actually, the big question, I think, uh, for the TV channels nowadays uh, is not their actual audience, meaning the number of people that actually watch uh, part of their programs, whether they watch it on regular uh, TV, or if they watch it on YouTube or other uh, devices. But uh, the problem is the budget. Uh, how do you get back uh, the money you invested? The, 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 the picture I just painted to you about the United Kingdom is not quite different from the situation in the United States of America because the same report goes somewhere to say that in 2015, the median age for viewers of Fox News in the U.S. was 67, MSNBC 68, and CNN 61%. Uh, uh, Q, Facebook, and Twitter, YouTube, and Snapchat. Instead, you see that their numbers are increasing because you have about 1.2 billion people on, on, on Facebook, for example. When, 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 when you get such statistics in a world where the majority of the global population is made up of young people and you have just a few old people watching television. Uh, this is an industry without a future. You just uh, you know, mentioned what's the biggest problem uh, for uh, TV. Uh, it's actually the demographics that you uh, just uh, mentioned. Um, 
The problem is uh, TV has got to find a way to reach new uh, audiences. And most of the time, uh, actually, we do it through all those social medias, whether they be Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or uh, whatever. But again, a big part of those contents are actually produced by either TV producers or uh, TV channels. Then what we truly have to find out is how we can keep a link with the fact that those uh, programs or bits uh, of those programs are watched, but most people who watch them uh, have no idea that they actually are television uh, produced uh, part of program. And I'm not obviously speaking of all uh, the photographs or the videos uh, that uh, people do themselves and put on Snapchat or Twitter or, or okay. Facebook well, or, well, well, or well, whatever. Well, well, well. CNN, for example, has a uh, global uh, uh, in-house penetration of roughly 100 million homes in, in the United States of America. The BBC is about 174 million viewers worldwide. You are the director general of the third largest media conglomerate in the world as you pride yourself, TV Sync Moon. Um, what is your global coverage? I know that you uh, are viewed in at least 200 countries. That is roughly the number of countries that belong to the world's uh, most uh, loved uh, sporting uh, 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 fabric, football. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, we are, uh, as you mentioned, there's not a country in the world uh, that uh, doesn't broadcast uh, our channel, which actually are uh, 12 different channels, uh, which are uh, themed uh, towards different uh, areas of uh, the planet. Uh, we, we are even broadcasted in North Korea, meaning basically we are... Uh, everywhere. We reach to uh, um, 320 million households uh, throughout the world for an audience that is, uh, let's say, around 90 uh, million uh, viewers. Just paint a picture to me of the situation in, in France where you have a very huge career of television broadcast at one moment you headed uh, RTL which is Europe's largest or most listened radio if my statistics are correct. What is the situation of the television industry in the francophone space? France as an example. Well it is basically the same as uh, you know as uh, as everywhere. In France uh, there are 27 actual uh, channels that uh, everybody, the whole population, which is uh, uh, 66 million people uh, nowadays, can watch for free. Okay, so that's uh, 27 uh, channels. Then you have the pay uh, for channels, either, uh, either because they are on cable, so you have to pay for the, uh, the cable, or you uh, have uh, the also the satellite uh, channels. Uh, basically, in France, uh, the data would be uh, exactly the same uh, you mentioned earlier about the UK or the United States, meaning uh, most of the viewers are close to 60 uh, years old. Uh, the audience in France is not uh, actually declining yet. It will be, probably in the three to five do years' do time. Do, do you understand why people like Donald Trump, people like Marie Le Pen, people like Nigel Farage, or the brand of populism hit the established media order because they consider you people as part of that corporate world that doesn't want to loosen the buttons of, of, of taking the world hostage since 1945? With this falling audience ratings, do you have a clear understanding of why people like Donald Trump would do a caricature of CNN in what the corporation simply called as a juvenile act? Do you understand their anger and rejection of 
television stations like yours, like mine, CRTV, like uh, CNN, BBC, in the whole concept of fake news? Well, it's a very complicated uh, issue, but uh, you are right, and uh, I certainly understand it. Uh, I guess the main reason for, let's say, Donald Trump's behavior and his wanting to speak through Twitter directly to uh, the, the American people. Or to his people, because yeah. I believe that that would not be filtered talk. Do you understand? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the reason is uh, that we have created a world that is represented through uh, the media of, let's say, uh, the winners of the globalization. Uh, so we actually represent what uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen's, Marine's father, used to call the establishment. Uh, so we are, we have become like uh, the you know, Paris the estate, the Washington estate, the Yaoundé estate, the London estate, the old guys. Yeah, exactly. We have come to uh, represent uh, life as it is for the people who have it good. You worked with um, France De and you were in charge of programming mm. in most European television. When you look at the content of, of, of your programs uh, worldwide of the traditional media, do you think that in reality there is a portion of the population that has been left out that people like Marie Le Pen, Donald Trump, Nigel Farage are representing and are serving the news correctly on Twitter, Facebook, Yahoo, Snapchat, and Emo? Yes, I do, but I won't say that television is the main culprit, uh, right? Uh, I think that the, the promise that France or the United States of America, uh, for example, which have been two of the big leaders of democracy throughout history and uh, throughout the world, uh, we, as countries, have not uh, been up to our standards. And a lot of people have felt in the last 20, 30 years felt betrayed by those uh, ideals. And uh, those are those people. Uh, in the United States, all the people that have been uh, you know, thrown out of their houses because they couldn't pay the mortgage anymore. In France, a lot of people who uh, can't find uh, any work anymore, or people who have been uh, uh, studying and have uh, huge uh, diplomas and can't find a job. All those people are angry at, quote unquote, the system as it is. And it's very unfortunate that uh, we in television haven't been as able as we should so far to find a way not to represent the good doers. We unfortunately give the impression that we give the rosy uh, news for all the people who have a good job, who have a steady family, and uh, who can enjoy life. In a world where Facebook speaks, in a world where Mark Zuckerberg controls the world, in a world where Twitter controls the world, in a world where Emo controls the world, in a world where YouTube controls the world, in a world where Dream Motion controls the world, in a world where Zhao Bao controls the world, the Chinese version of, of mm. Facebook. How should television managers like you be redrafting programming in order not to lose the, 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 the entire audience? The case of TV Sync Mount in particular, what are you doing in that area? <laughs> uh, we are trying to get uh, our viewers involved with uh, the program to actually give them a uh, voice so they can react uh, to uh, our programs and also you have to be on the ground, you have to be on the field, uh, you have to listen to uh, the people that have the impression that you know they are speaking to nobody or they're speaking but they are not heard. So we have to be on the ground. Obviously for 
uh, uh, company such as ours, it's very difficult because as we broadcast uh, throughout the planet, it's very difficult to give a voice to anybody at the same time, which is the reason why we have geographical uh, channels for different uh, parts of the world. Yeah, but, but you know, one of the uh, dilemmas facing uh, TV Cinq Monde in particular, uh, you are celebrating your 25th anniversary and we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritties of that in a moment. One of the dilemmas facing a corporation like yours is that you represent an ideology and that ideology is la francophonie and the survival of the French language throughout the world. I just wonder how you claim that you broadcast in about 200 countries in the world where people speak um, Mandarin, people speak English and other regions of the world, people speak Portuguese. Do you broadcast in the um, uh, languages of those areas? Because insofar as I know, um, TV Saint Mont with 12 channels broadcast in roughly 200 countries is French, 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 French. Absolutely, because we... Multi uh, multiculturalism is not part of your portion. Yes, it is, but not through uh, uh, the language that we speak. Uh, I would have to tell you, Charles, that uh, uh, the French language is not an ideology in itself. And it's not the enemy of uh, the other languages. First thing you got to know is that more than 60% of our viewers throughout the planet don't actually speak a word of French. They watch our programs throughout our 14 uh, languages in subtitles, including English, including Chinese, including Spanish, and uh, Russian, and uh, uh, a lot of different uh, languages, Portuguese, uh, which uh, you mentioned. When I look at your company statistics, um, mm -hmm. Uh, um, uh, TV Saint Mont has at least 130 million, uh, 33 million viewers in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, you have about um, uh, uh, 68 million viewers in the whole of Africa. That is the Maghreb and Sub-Saharan Africa combined. Mm -hmm. I, I, in Asia, you have about 70 million viewers. Somebody would have thought that um, the anniversary celebrations should take place where you have more viewers. You decided to bring it in Africa and in Cameroon in particular. What explains such a choice? Well, actually, what we are celebrating this year is uh, the launch 25 years ago of TV 5 Monde Afrique, which is a particular channel uh, for African countries, whether they speak French, English, Spanish, or Portuguese, because we have subtitles uh, in all those uh, languages. Now, the reason why we uh, chose to launch those celebrations that will uh, continue until the end of the year here in uh, Yaoundé is the very unofficial reason is that uh, Mrs. Denise Epote which is uh, the boss for TV 5 Monde Afrique, is actually from uh, Cameroon. She's from Douala. Uh, but what we chose actually as uh, the official uh, reason is the Festival Ecran Noir, which we've been in uh, partnership with uh, since its beginning uh, 20 years ago. So that's the reason why we are what, in Yaoundé what, what today. Road, what road has been covered so far since TV Saint Monde Afrique uh, started existing roughly 25 years ago? What can you be proud of as successes in a very difficult uh, economic environment times devaluation in the 1990s, which struck most of your countries where you are viewed the Semak region in particular and some countries in West Africa where you have a huge French speaking uh, community. What are the key successes you can be proud of? Well, m basically what we've been trying to do uh, in those uh, last uh, years is to Africanize uh, the channel as much as uh, we can. We have been uh, uh, financing and co-producing a lot of uh, um, African movies and promoting African uh, cinema. We also have been investing in uh, African uh, TV series, 
which are very popular uh, here with broadcasting them throughout uh, Africa. The African uh, cinema we are broadcasting throughout the world. Also, we've been uh, broadcasting uh, the Olympic Games uh, to Africa uh, last year from uh, Rio de uh, Janeiro. We have an African uh, news uh, program uh, every day that is getting uh, bigger and bigger, uh, attracts a lot of viewers. When I uh, came on board at the channel four years ago, it was a 12 minute uh, program. I made it into an 18 minutes and it will be by uh, the end of October, a 26 uh, minutes program and it will be for the first time hosted by uh, African uh, journalist, which I think is very important because we really want uh, TV 5 Monde Afrique to reflect uh, and to represent uh, its viewers. Back in 2015, there was, an, uh, there was a, a cyber attack of, 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 of your channel, which kept you off the air for roughly two hours before you regained uh, stability of broadcast and uh, the attackers were simply called the APT28. And, and, and they are now known mm -hmm. since then mm -hmm. as a Fancy Bear, which we, you've probably uh, yeah, heard yeah, a lot sure. about. They're a Russian uh, group of at yeah, uh, attackers. Yeah, that you, you, you qualified the attack as un unprecedented in the history of television. Those uh, unfortunately, th it th is. Th 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 those were your words. Um, uh, what has been the final conclusion of those uh, investigations and how, just how vulnerable are television stations across the world to um, uh, uh, hackers? We all, unfortunately, are very, very vulnerable and this is uh, the new world. Uh, at TV 5 Monde, what uh, the inquiries by the seven uh, different uh, French police uh, forces and also the ANSI, which is uh, kind of like the French government. Uh, Information Protection Agency. Yeah, exactly, in the uh, IT uh, in world. In the IT world, in the IT world, yeah. Uh, what those uh, inquiries shown are two things, and there are two that they can't prove, okay? The two uh, things that they uh, demonstrated for sure is first that the attack was meant to destroy us. It was not to ransom, as has been the fashion uh, lately. It wasn't to uh, take data from our viewers or our employees. It was actually to destroy us. The second thing that uh, the investigation uh, showed was that uh, those hackers w w were this uh, group of uh, Russian uh, that you mentioned. Now there are two things. So they, they were not from the Islamic State as the original conclusions indicated? They weren't. You are um, the Director General of TV Saint Mont. Uh, you pride yourself as the third uh, media guru in the world after CNN and MTV and probably BBC should be the fourth. You yeah. have roughly 70 journalists. As yeah, close to 100 uh, now. Close to 100 <laughs> now. I just wonder why you succeed so well with very few journalists to broadcast <laughs> the world over. But I know corporations that employ at least 400 journalists, but their output just to cover a national channel or a national territory is difficult. From a managerial perspective, mm. what can be the problem? Uh, well, uh, actually the thing is, uh, our model is uh, very unique, as I said uh, to you earlier, Charles. Uh, the thing is, w we have uh, this, let's say, 100 uh, journalists, and then we have correspondents. Also, 100 journalists are in Paris, w right? Oh, there we have as freelancers. We, yeah, we have a lot of freelancers throughout the world, and particularly uh, here in Africa. Uh, but also, with the programs that we broadcast. We also broadcast the news and the news magazines from the French public service, France 2 and France 3, also from Radio Canada, also from the Belgium and the Swiss 
uh, TV, which means that actually our, well, our if, force if, if, is if, much if, bigger if, than if, if ourselves. I get, if I get you clearly, there is no television station in the world today that can decide to do it all alone itself. It's impossible, right? I, I, well, I guess so. I guess uh, CNN is the closest. The Director General of TV Sync warned Eve Bigo, thank you very much indeed for being guest on Globe Watch. Thanks to you, Charles. You are welcome. <laughs>